kind of like, you know, when one king comes in and they, they chisel off the name of the other king off of monuments. So um, there, there's quite a bit of ancient builder technology uh, in, in the Saturn region. So there's a, a lot of this comes from a lot of lore. So, you know, this is where, you know, I have to, I have to be careful because there's a lot of sacred cows and a lot of uh, belief systems. And, um, you know, I've, I've been stepping on a lot of toes lately, but, uh, you know, I've, uh, <laughs> I've been out there and around and, uh, you know, there's certain, there's, let's just say I've been around Jupiter, uh, a lot of the area around Saturn is highly restricted from even, uh, our secret space programs there it is uh, there are a lot of uh, et groups that uh, have that area uh, pretty much staked as their own well is our whole solar system moving up in vibration yes I mean, the whole the, universe is, the whole solar system is. So. Well, well, def- definitely our, our not only our whole solar system, but our there's our whole local star cluster. Uh, the whole, all of the, the local stars in, in our region, we're heading into uh, a higher vibrational area of our uh, galaxy. Uh, that's why, I mean, just like David Wilcock and some other people have pointed out that uh, we have, uh, all the all this climate change and strange anomalies that have been occurring on all the planets steadily increasing uh, each year. Uh, we have you know like these weird uh, I don't know if it's a hexagon or some sort of weird uh, uh, geographical um, anomaly that I think appeared on Saturn on its uh, I think it's North Pole um, just. There's, there's a, and, and that's caused by frequency, a change in the frequency in the, the solar system. And uh, this is translating down to people. This, you know, people are acting bizarre. I mean, if you haven't <laughs> noticed, yes. um, you, know, oh, people yeah. are, you know, people are acting pretty bizarre. And mm-hmm. um, it's, it's, you know, and it's, it, it's, getting, it's getting more and more pronounced. And uh, it's going to increase, increase, and increase, and uh, we're going to start seeing more and more bizarre type of behavior. And um, this, a lot, you know, it's just, you know, this this change in vibrational energy entering into our solar system is, you know, like you know, cosmic Red Bull. <laughs> mhm. With wings. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it gives you wings. <laughs> Sorry for the pun there. <laughs> no, I like right. it. I like it. I wish I would have thought of it. <laughs> now, we have a question uh, from our N5D Facebook, um, uh, one of our members there, and he wants to know if you you can go into more detail on what's inside the moon and who built it. Well, and that question is coming the, from Mark Petnod. I'm sorry. just wanted to give him credit for that. That's okay. Um, the the I have not been allowed below a certain level of the Lunar Operation Command, which bugs the snot out of me. Um, hmm. Because because uh, in just about every meeting that's been up there, they've been bringing between thirty and eighty civilians, just everyday people off everywhere on the planet that have been going up and uh, these people haven't been come forward, you know, haven't been coming forward to talk about it. So I don't know if they've been told to keep quiet about it, or I know they're not, uh, they're not blank slating people. Now uh, the Alliance isn't blank slating people, but Mm -hmm. uh, they're, you know, they're keeping quiet about it, but these people are being taken on a full tour of the LOC. And there's been a couple of times that I've seen, the uh, side view map and I'd see that it's the LOC is narrower at the top, goes down like wider, wider at the bottom, like a shape, like a bell. And, and it goes, uh, if not all the way down pretty far down close to, uh, to the, uh, 
uh, outer rim of uh, what the moon really is. So I have not seen what is on the inside. I've uh, I've heard rumors and information uh, from people, and I. Uh, but I did read on the uh, smart glass pads that it was a uh, artificial something that was created artificially that was flown into the mm-hmm. uh, position the position that it is now around 500,000 years ago was uh, put into a tidal lock with the earth and left there and uh, apparently refugees that were on board it were uh, um, supposedly many perished but some came from that vessel to the earth well I was just wondering oh I'm sorry no go ahead (laughs) I was just wondering if there's a like a hologram cover up that we actually see because there was this one guy on YouTube who had you know used his high powered uh, telescope and camera and he actually filmed a, kind of like a glitch in the programming the cover up yeah uh, what we're seeing what do you know anything yeah. about that yeah the uh, the the moon has it's basically split up kind of like Antarctica is into all kinds of uh, diplomatic zones. And uh, some of these, uh, the ET groups that have been there for many thousands of years, uh, they, they do have a kind of holographic uh, type of projection that they use to hide their activities. Okay. Now, on one of your uh, Gaim TV episodes, you mentioned that the sun, or Sol, is an electric stargate that's being fed by some sort of waves that are hitting it. Many people have noticed that the sun has gone from a deep egg yolk yellow color to basically being white. Do you have, do you have any idea why this is happening? Yeah, it, it's because of these uh, frequency changes. It's shifting the uh, yeah, the star is shifting. It's also the the surface. The uh, I don't have the information in front of me now. Uh, I don't have access to my internet. I have it on my site somewhere. But uh, the there's it has uh, in the last ten years the the hydrogen bond. There's there's been a a, a change in the uh, chemistry as well on in the the surface layers. So yeah, it uh, it has definitely shifted from yellow, uh, actually uh, shifted from yellow to uh, more of an orange uh, color when uh, when seen from space. Ah, okay, but from here it looks more white, doesn't it? Yeah, when viewed through yeah the atmosphere, yeah, yeah. the. Yeah, but uh, it's uh, it's definitely going through vibratory changes that is uh, affecting affecting it, and it the 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 sun these it it is changing energy into matter. It's basically a mm-hmm. giant replicator. So mm-hmm. I mean it's it's pr- it's producing water, it's producing hydrogen, it's producing all types of. Uh, uh, things that then combine further outside and become minerals, even. So mm-hmm. uh, the the sun is is a very a lot more complex and uh, uh, nothing like what mainstream science is putting forth what it is. Well, you know, honestly, the way I see it is that you know it's it's like through alchemy, as above, so below, as within, so without. What's happening on the sun is merely a reflection of what's happening to our planet and. What's happening to us on an individual level? We're also changing. I have a feeling. Would you agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, everybody's. Changing. Yeah, that's why, you know, we're seeing, uh, you know, some people behaving very bizarre. Some people mm-hmm. starting to really look to become more spiritual. Some people 
you know, like I said, it has to do with your polarity. The people that are kind of good at heart anyway are, 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 are good people are becoming better. They're looking to become more spiritual. They're looking to become more service to others on their planet. They're looking to uh, become more loving and helpful to people. And people that have struggled with, uh, um, you know, I'm sad to say mental illness, they're, they're getting hit really hard. People that have struggled with negative feelings of about themselves or negative feelings about the world or other people, they're, mm-hmm. those negative feelings and thoughts are, are being enhanced and, and they're, and they're becoming yeah. very, re, they're becoming very triggered and reactionary to, to just about anything. Mm-hmm. I totally agree. Um, and here's something else too that, that I've been meaning to ask you in 2010, I had a dream where I sent myself back in time from 26 years into the future because the critical mass wasn't high enough or where it needed to be for this current awakening. And when someone asked me, who are you? I answered that I'm a master copy of myself. During the Electric Sun episode of Cosmic Disclosure, you mentioned that we're receiving help from higher dimensional beings and are given information in our dreams to help us progress at the end of this major cycle. And when I heard that, Mm -hmm. I thought, wow, that's exactly what I was told in this dream that I had in 2010. And my comment is written and time-stamped in one of my forums dating back to February 9th, 2010, when I had this dream. So how does one differentiate between dreams, time travel, and reality? Well... It you have you know you have to use your own discernment. You're you're going to know deep, especially you know if you have. It, it's also going to depend if you have a, a, a strong connection to your higher self. You're going to be able mm-hmm. to discern these things a lot better. If you're a person out there that's kind of new to all this stuff, uh, then you know you you got to be a little bit careful. You can't just willy nilly go in and. Uh, uh, any uh, voice or any uh, thought being that tries to connect with you and says that it's positive, you can't go, oh, okay, cool. He says that, you know, it says it's loving, let's talk, you know. But, if you know, you've, you've been working on your on your self spiritually, you've been connecting with your higher self through meditation, and you've been doing the inner work, then you're going to have developed your discernment a lot better. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, time travel, time is a very, very tricky thing because it's it's tied in very, very much with consciousness as well. One of the things that, you know, we learned in um, not just the, uh, the the programs that, you know, fall under the MyLab program. Uh, most people want to think that everything in the MyLab program is MKUltra, and that's, that's just not the truth. But mm-hmm. in, in these programs, when they were teaching – uh, and remote viewing and remote influencing. One of the things that uh, you realize when you're doing uh, the the black ops above uh, military type remote viewing is that if let's say you come up with a target for a remote viewer, okay, and you write down coordinates on a, on an index card and you put it in an envelope and it passes by three different people and then the remote viewer opens it, looks at these uh, alphanumeric coordinates and uh, they do a reading and uh, this reading is for some information in the future. Well, that future that they're looking into is going to be affected by the consciousness and the belief system of the person who created that target. It's not necessarily going, it's going to be, that's why I call it a probable future because it you know let's you know let's say you know you have a, a belief that uh, the the future is negative and uh, there's going to be a pole shift and uh, there's going to be a kill shot event where the world is eaten with fire from the sun <clears throat> and you write down these coordinates and you give it to a remote viewer that's what they're gonna they're gonna see something like that but if they're they're more than likely going to see something like that the chance is really good. But if you if you believe that it's going to be a golden age and and uh, that type of thing, you're going to 
the, the consciousness is, is just an amazing thing that we're just barely starting in mainstream. We're barely starting to get an idea about, you know, the idea, you know, that we have a shared consciousness and people worry that, you know, it's like, you know, Oh, you're talking about a hive mind. It's we already have a shared consciousness and we are co-creating what is going on in this world right now with our shared consciousness. It's just that a lot of these negative groups that know about this power are using our co-creative consciousness against us. They're, they're planting seeds and in movies and uh, on on the news and false flag events and our our wide band of emotions are triggers for our our consciousness and if they can get us uh, uh, all of us all scared like in a nine eleven event then they can create they can create a new timeline and get us to choose this new timeline with our co creation our co-creative consciousness and head down it as a group. So there, there is so much that we are as a people have been that we've had kept from us about our true power as individuals and as a group that we are going to be learning. Well, it does uh, put us in a difficult position as, alternative news reporters and writing articles. You know, I I have a website called How to Exit the Matrix, and I have to cover all these things, but yet, you know, the key is is not to focus on it and not to put any emotion into observing, you know, the truth about what's happening and not focusing on it. And, you know, um, a lot of people, I mean, I I had to go down that path for at least eight months, started out with Cameron Day about the false light beings. That just, you know, started blowing me away about uh, that whole false light campaign. But, you know, it was a learning curve, and I learned about it, and I had to move on and, uh, and realize, and, you know, I still have my website updated every day with wonderful things. But I have to now, you know, try to... Um, share and focus on what we need to be doing and how we can help heal people and get through this time. And what, you know, I appreciate you sharing that the information that you're sharing because, um, you know, you are, you're a leader in, in bringing through information uh, about your experiences. And a lot of people have a question about you and they want to know how you're able to talk about all these things and how the government is allowing this when they've been trying to keep this from us for so long. I imagine it's not much different than me talking about it and still being here. You know, if they want to screw with our Internet here and there, that's fine, but we're highly protected and we stand in our own sovereignty and our own power and basically our, we know what we're here to do. So could you, could you give everybody sure. the, the answer to that question? Sure. Yeah. There's there's a couple of things to that. Um, you know, I I have gotten my fair share of death threats. I um, there's you know because of you know I've there's been a massive uh, disinformation campaign that has been put out against me, uh, especially by the AI profit group. They were they did not like the information about artificial intelligence that I put out. I put out quite a bit of really damning information. And um, the, uh, these groups have been very disappointed in um, how much they, you know, how they have, have not been able to totally destroy me the way they wanted to in uh, the alternative community. That's, one of the ways that they were trying to take me down was just take me down uh, credibility wise. Uh, secondly, I've, uh, I've had to install, uh, you know, video cameras and uh, some other uh, things I won't uh, talk about uh, security measures. Uh, I've had break in attempts to my home uh, on uh, two different occasions now that were pretty serious. And uh, <clears throat> a lot of people that follow my Facebook site know that, uh, and I, I, I decided not to tell the full information about this because uh, some actual, some 
well-known researchers and other people have been so heavily attacking me. I didn't want my family and children to be a part of their attacks, but, um, you know, there, we did have uh, a group that uh, intruded into our house and, uh, uh, you know, they're, uh, it was a, a very scary situation um, The people saw on the Internet that I uh, talked about these tall blondes with the real tall foreheads that had six fingers. Um, the, uh, my son wouldn't stop talking about it. My four-year-old son, you know, said, I mean, he was freaked out. Uh, he had woke up with a bloody nose. There was blood in his bed. Uh, you know, he, he talked about the uh, yellow-haired men that took him in an airplane in the front of the house. And, I mean, it, it really freaked us out. And uh, mm-hmm. um, it, it, uh, when we were at uh, Guyam uh, Television and I was describing on one of the episodes that they recorded a bunch of different beings and they put up a picture. My kids were up there with me. They put up a picture of the basically – the closest we could find to that group. Um, you know, my daughter and son were back in the recording room and they got very upset. Um, so, you know, that, and, you know, I, I was, I was told that I do have a certain amount of protection, but it is tied karmically to, to it's tied to me and karmically how I, behave and think I can open myself up to attacks mm-hmm. with uh, fear if, or any kind with, of doubt. Yeah. Yeah. And or, that, 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 know, that was basically, that was, that was basically my question too. Why isn't the sphere of being Alliance helping to keep you safe and healthy? Yes. And they, they, I mean, they are, they are, they're helping me to a certain point, but they, there's been so many things that I've, you know, um, I, I, was having meetings to where I was just really busting hard the uh, SSP Alliance Council about why, you know, they would not allow me access to some of their healing technology that I knew was a floor Mm -hmm. below when I was about to have surgery. And Mm -hmm. um, finally, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Gonzalez, um, that's that's his pseudonym, his real name, He's, he finally told me that, listen, he said, this, the, the blue avians are the ones that didn't want you to have this healing technology. And I was like, what? <laughs> and and because he's been in contact with them about the same amount of time as I have. And he said, yeah, he said, they said that it is uh, part of your, uh, it is uh, part of your karmic cycle you're still dealing with a lot of your karmic cycle that uh you know you know i'm out there talking about people need to uh forgive others and forgive their self to stop the wheel of karma when i haven't totally forgiven myself for things that i was forced to be involved in when i was in these programs and therefore i haven't stopped the wheel of karma with myself yet so you know there's Mm. certain things that you know I, I'm I'm only human, you know. I'm no guru. I'm no special teacher. Or I'm I'm no I'm no special than anyone else. I I have flaws about myself that I need to work on, and you know, it's something that uh, you know I need to address. And it's uh, when I've told people that, you know, uh, have joked around about this being kind of a uh, golden rule, hippie kind of uh, uh, message, you know, I've told them, I said, you know, this is not an easy path to walk. Trying to, to, to love those who are hating you, to love yourself, and when you've really shined the light inside and seen all the dark places, and uh, to try to constantly, uh, you know, have thoughts of service to others and to constantly be of higher vibrational, uh, 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 you know, try to, of everything, try to be higher vibrational. That's very difficult in, in this environment. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I fall short, you know, I, I'm, I'm not 
I'm not an offended being by any means. So, you well, know, I'll I tell tried you to what, pay the Corey, price for that. I'll tell you what. Dolores Cannon said that the quickest and best way to overcome karma is through forgiveness. It's that simple. It is. It's it's that simple, and it's that incredibly hard at the same time. Yeah. Well, what I found, Corey, as a life coach, is is many people are so involved in being service to others that they don't stop and take the time to seriously work on themselves. Nor do they have you know time alone where they can do that. Some of us spent year or two years alone working on ourselves. Before I ever met Greg, I was by myself. Um, you know, in between a marriage, you know, that was, I spent time way by myself in the marriage too. So it does, it does take the work and uh, everybody has to do it. That's the one part that no, no, nobody's going to do for us is that one part. And it, it does seem hard, but it truly is simple and it's magic. I mean, our thoughts and our words are truly magic, and you can just come up with a simple incantation to look in the mirror and do a little white magic on yourself and just tell yourself how much you love yourself and tell yourself you completely forgive yourself that this is yes. uh, an illusion, an experience, and you were just playing a part and a role in it. And watch watch how quickly you are protecting yourself because your aura becomes so golden and hard around you where nothing can affect you. And then you can also share that with your family and you're basically can protect yourself. And then, you know, then they can, then the spear being alliance can support you and your action. So, Hey, you just had a life coaching session. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that you're an introvert like Michelle and me. So I'm sure it's not easy for you to come out on radio and, Guy M T V to talk about this. Yeah, I'm a I N F J, I think is what oh uh, I'm, a def- yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm an I N F P. Yeah, we're both yeah. INFPs. I think yeah. that's my so word. I- yeah. But yeah, I'm a high highly introverted. Um when the uh Raw Tier Air was uh telling me that uh I was going to be speaking uh, in front of this group of uh, the the this Federation Council on their behalf, uh, speaking in front of the uh, uh, SSP Council, and uh, in the future I was going to be speaking in front of uh, groups of people down here. I was like, uh, <clears throat> I don't think so. <laughs> I said, you know, I have a very weak voice. <laughs> Uh, I, I talk for 45 minutes and then I start to lose my voice, you know, and I'm, uh, I'm great. I can write, I can, I can sit there and write my thoughts out and sound somewhat mm-hmm. intelligent, but I'm not a public speaker. <laughs> I'm like, you guys are not picking the right person here. And uh, they were adamant that, you know, I was who they wanted to do it. And I was like, uh, okay. But, um, uh, uh, you know, I don't know why uh, they they would pick an introvert over you know an extrovert. I know, you know, and it's funny too because I was told by a psychic Sherry Elise a number of years ago that I'd be speaking in front of large groups of people and I'd be doing radio shows. And the first thing I told her is, "That's never going to happen. <laughs> Not this introvert." <laughs> and here I am doing a radio yeah. show. I've had several conferences, in 5D conferences here and in Los Angeles, and she was right, but I would never have thought that. I'm a, you know, if and I've told so many people this. If there's a party going on, and envision a square room, I would be in one of the corners watching people. That that's if you want to find me at a big party, which I probably wouldn't go to to begin with. If I right. did, that's where I would be in one of those corners. Yeah, that's me too. I'm a people watcher. I would be sitting there yes. quietly watching people making it, making idiots of themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, in general. Um, now, are are you familiar with Sherry Wild? She's a contactee. No, I'm, and that's uh, I'm not real familiar with a whole lot of different contactees and different huh? a lot of different people's work. And I get asked about stuff a lot of times, and and I I really don't know about a lot of these different uh, people and a lot of work. And um, I mean, I'm just now. Uh, getting to to read the 
trying to get to read book one of the law of one. My wife read it. Mm-hmm. Uh, David Wilcox been pushing, you know, telling me I needed to read it. And, uh, uh, you know, I just, uh-huh. I haven't, uh, I haven't really done it. And I, you know, I know I need to, but, uh, what, what, yeah. what, what is, what do you, well, uh, actually what, I, I would like to ahead. talk later on about the, the law of one, the harvest, because I've read the law, the law of one and I don't necessarily agree with some of the stuff that's in there. But, uh, anyway, Sherry Wilde is a contactee who has connections to one of the gray races. And Michelle and I were watching one of Sherry's videos where she stated that in 2009, time was stopped for three days while extraterrestrials would read the individual vibration of every person on the planet. Are you aware of this event happening in 2009? No. Okay. Just curious about that. I'm not... I'm not well, saying basically, it didn't what it was happen. I'm just I'm not aware of of that now. Mm-hmm. Well, from what I understand, it it goes back to what I was saying about everybody having um, their prior soul experiences and trying to basically figure out uh, well, not figure out, but help people along who weren't awakened at that point, which I actually wasn't until 2010. I was completely asleep. Uh, based on their their soul's experiences and what their soul had in store for them, if they hadn't awakened yet, they needed to trigger. And um, also that uh, when this waves of, of energy were to come in, um, they're, you know, they're talking, some people are talking about truly um, these um, abilities, truly these abilities for the people who are ready for them, to start experiencing um, extreme psychic powers and perhaps even some people uh, being able to do things like um, telekinesis, um, maybe even vibrate themselves right out of this reality like the Mayans did. So that's why we were we're kind of, you know, studying that right now, and that's why we were interested in that uh, kind of information. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, you know, for most most of these um these groups that are highly advanced i mean they realize that time is a um an illusion mm-hmm. and uh, I, I mean for them i mean uh stopping it for 3 days i mean it, it i mean they they experience time time in a totally different way than we do so I, I mean, they a lot of a lot of these beings uh, can can come in and um, uh, experience uh, a uh, compressed or uh, expanded amount of time uh, uh, while in our midst and uh, while we're experiencing the same linear time that we normally do. Mm-hmm. So uh you know time time is uh is is a, is a very interesting thing in its own right. Mhm. Now there's a comment in the chat room from Kim Burnett who says that uh I love Sherry Wild. She is awesome. She backs up Corey a great deal. So there you go. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. There's also yeah, I, um I just I just oh, I just um I just haven't heard of uh a lot of uh a lot of these people, and I haven't had the time to look into their their information. I, mm-hmm. It just it, it does it doesn't mean that I disagree with it or that I think their information is not true. Just I, ha- I haven't had time to look into it. Well, what do we need to do to give you that time? <laughs> Are you still uh, working? Are you still working uh, during the day? Oh my gosh! Uh, well, I I am working completely on this right now. Oh, good. Mm-hmm. That's good. Yeah, yeah. My uh, other, my other career uh, in the IT field was pretty much uh, decimated um, when uh, I was. When they found out who you were. <laughs> yeah, I was kind what? of, uh, I was kind <laughs> of outed before I could uh, take certain uh, precautions and that kind of thing and get things set mm-hmm. up. Uh, you know, all the powers that be and all that already knew who I was when I was putting out information under my pseudonym. But uh, uh, I had, I was on uh, a bunch of different uh, uh, vendor lists, my company was. 
and uh, I uh, immediately got tossed off of those lists, and uh, it's it's I, I really can't get uh, work doing uh, uh, what I do <laughs> now. So. Understandably. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, but, Corey, I, I mean, if I go, if I were to go in now for a job interview or anything, the first thing they do, everyone does is they Google your name, and yes. they'll be like, "Oh, you the guy that talks to bluebirds?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be like uh, me yeah. trying to get a job as a child and family therapist right now, you know, and that's my background. <laughs> but I'm sure they would analyze me. Now, you've you've met with many different galactic races. Does does everyone have a general consensus? of who source or creator is, or do some races have a varying opinion? You know, we haven't talked, mainly, mainly what we've talked about are, is the um, grand experiment mm-hmm. that, uh, is going on here in the solar system. And uh, the only uh, part that they've talked about when it comes to uh, I guess their type of theology is that they have talked about they are just as much a part of this grand experiment as we are, and mm-hmm. that they understand that there are these uh, higher density or almost angelic type realms above them, and like a like an onion going up until uh, you reach what every what they all seem to call source. So. Um, what they each personally think of or feel when they say source, they haven't shared with me, but they have all generally kind of used that, uh, that term. Mm -hmm. Well, to your knowledge, do any other galactic races acknowledge Christianity or Jesus? Um, I mean that uh, that haven't come up. That uh, the only thing I didn't that, think it would. Uh, yeah, that didn't come up. I mean, the only thing that uh, uh, I I brought you know to raw tear air. Uh, I uh, uh, told him uh, that uh, I was raised a Christian and a Christian. Uh, is it, you know, do you have a problem with that? And uh, uh, he didn't communicate anything back. He just looked with his hands out, and he, he just kind of bowed his head. And uh, he, he didn't roll his eyes. <laughs> no. So I mean, but uh, I haven't had a conversation about Christianity, Muslim, Buddhism, or anything like that with any uh, non-terrestrials. Okay, well, let me change the subject. Let's talk about some Dracos. Um, mm, I, I, have, <laughs> I have heard that some people are saying that basically um, the big guys have left the building and are throwing the lower class reptilians under the bus. Um, that they're, you know, you've talked about trying to make a deal to um, to give the royals a safe passage out of the solar system before these energetic waves come and things. I was wondering, did that swap take place? Is my first question. Have the no, royals didn't. given a safe, safe passage out? No, they really, really, really wanted to get out, and uh, that was denied. They were not given. Uh, safe passage out and uh, um, yeah that when they tried to make that deal that's when uh, everything went south with all of the uh, secret earth government syndicates that were uh, that had uh, occult occult type uh, um, connections uh, that the people call like the Illuminati that uh, pretty much worship the reptilians and the Draco. Um, they were uh, basically betrayed by their gods, and uh, they all of a sudden all these groups started infighting to see, uh, you know, who was going to give up who to save whose butt, and that's 
the, the Draco actually in a roundabout way did the SSP council a favor because that's when we received a lot of our uh, Illuminati and Cabal defectors. Uh, they they came with a lot of information and promises to take p- part in future uh, global tribunals against people if they were put in a um, off-world witness protection type program, them and their families. And uh, a lot of these people, these uh, cabal uh, defectors were taken off planet to secret locations and they uh, uh, different alliance groups, including earth alliance groups have been taken to them to pump them for information and uh, to see if that matches the information that the uh, Earth Alliance, the Earth Alliance did a series of massive super hacks uh, against the Five Eye uh, intelligence agencies and uh, European and U.S. government groups and uh, received a massive amount of intelligence. And Edward Snowden's information was completely decrypted recently like I believe in May or June, all of that information has been collated to where they have it database in a database and they can look at it. And uh, all of this information is, is what's being collated for a massive data dump for a full disclosure event here in the future. And uh, the, um, the, the, cat, the catalyst for a lot of this was when the Draco tried to make this deal to where they could leave the solar system. And uh, they were, it, it was them and the committee of 200 that worked close to them were very upset when this was made public. And uh, their, the lower echelons found out about it because this basically, it, it, it caused chaos within the ranks. And um, it, it caused some very uh, high-ranking different Illuminati uh, cabal uh, insiders to defect and uh, uh, provide information. Well, did the Earth's consciousness know that she would be used in such a way to trap some of these Dracos, and basically when she shifts her vibration, they either have to switch polarities or be returned source to be reconstituted for some other kind of energy. Are you familiar with that? Yeah, I think that, I think that from the very beginning, the, uh, the earth and the sun and the whole solar system knew that it was a part of this giant, uh, basically honey trap. Mm-hmm. that uh, was going to catch all the negatives in it. And uh, these, this Sphere Being Alliance group, which are basically guardians of some galactic type of guardians of some sort, uh, they haven't claimed to be uh, raw from the Law of One. Uh, they haven't claimed not to be. They, haven't, they don't call themselves the Blue Avians. They don't call themselves the Sphere Being Alliance. That's what the SSP Alliance has named them. They don't call themselves anything. When you mm-hmm. ask them who they are, they'll say what their name is. That's how they respond. Mm-hmm. But um, they, uh, this, this seems to be a ancient and long orchestrated plan. Mm-hmm. And everybody here on the planet is part of it. They just need to remember that and... Uh, that's yes. how we're going to change this whole reality. So when the Earth raises her vibration, they call that like the shift. Is is that something that um, that do you know if that's coming in the next couple of years? Or I mean, is this is this shift coming this year, or is this is still going to be something that unfolds with with time? It's our it's the shift is underway. It's right. Um, but it's been the happening. It's good. It's going to continue to happen at an accelerated rate, and it's something that's going to continue for a long time. It's, uh, I mean, it's not something that is going to uh, just boom happen. It it is a uh, gradual process that's going to continue to happen for a long time, and 
that, I mean, that's the best answer I can give you. You know, Matt Kahn talks about September 28th being a day for ascension, and other people are mentioning September 23rd as a day of ascension. You know, personally, I have a hard time believing any of these dates because, well, mainly all that's time, dangerous. all time. Yeah, well, number one, it's dangerous to put a date on anything, but all time exists at once anyway. What are your thoughts on these dates of ascension? Yeah, you you just took the word out of my mouth. All time exists at once. So um, what controls disclosure controls um, a lot of the stuff that we're talking about. It's not only these energetic waves that are coming in, but it's also our mass consciousness. Mm -hmm. So that's not something anyone can put a date on. And anyone that's putting a date out there, that date's going to come. It's going to go. I mean, every year, September or October, someone's putting out a date, and it comes and goes. Uh, Even a broken clock is right twice a day. So eventually something's (laughs) going to happen in September, October, and someone's going to say, oh, I was right. But just about every well, time I, an earthquake doesn't happen, uh, an event doesn't happen, you know. So, you know, you got to be very careful about putting those dates out there. Yeah, and one thing I do know about about the dates is that we are we are receiving a huge, a huge galactic wave of energy, and like you said, we're moving through a certain part of the universe that's actually you know exacerbating that so i do know Mm -hmm. that september is going to be i mean what people need to help wake their family up i know you can't wake anybody up but what people need and what people desire and want is proof of something and you know they're getting the proof but they don't understand they think they just have a black cloud over their head you know they don't see that it's trying to help them to um to wake up really so, right, yeah. and that's that's why you know a lot of people are asking when are the data dumps going to happen? When's this going to happen? You know, mm-hmm. and a lot of it has to do the <clears throat> the alliances have had all of the information for the data dump distributed amongst themselves. So if one of them was to do a data dump prematurely, that would be a bad thing. You don't want to dump the data on a bunch of asleep people, so that the mainstream media and the powers that still are can cover it up or discredit it. What you have to do is you have to wait for a catalyst event, Mm -hmm. something like, unfortunately, a global economic meltdown to Mm -hmm. where everybody is completely ticked off and they see all the evidence that there's been a giant Ponzi scheme, financial Ponzi scheme, and they see that all – and the only way that could happen is if all the politicians were in the pockets of the banksters. So then all of a sudden all these people are are looking for more and more information that they would consider conspiracy theory. So now they have a thirst for this information. Then something like that, a catalyzing event, is going to make the time ripe for dumping the kind of data that Snowden had alone, let alone all this other data from the super hacks. People don't realize the NSA put all their eggs in one basket. Mm -hmm. They had tons of information about crimes against humanity, about the secret space program, about ETs, about all kinds of stuff. And one of the biggest files they had was was the file that the uh, uh, secret government used to blackmail certain, I mean, just about every politician and uh, financial people to do what they wanted them to. So Mm -hmm. they have all these blackmail files that have like all these sick, you know, pedophile type crimes and and these other things. And so all of it, I mean, this is, you know, people think of disclosure. They think of the president walking up to the microphone and saying, all right, we've been lying for about 80 years. There really are aliens. Roswell was true. Sorry, guys. Now you know. <laughs> End of speech. That's not what disclosure is going to be. Full no. disclosure is going to be information that entails all the crimes against humanity that these uh, uh, secret government groups have been doing, 
It's going to have to do with all of these hidden technologies. And the existence of extraterrestrial life is just a small part of it. Mm -hmm. You know, I've always said that we're going to take a step backwards before we take a huge quantum leap forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going to have... Yeah, we're going to have 